Starfield is a game about space and being on rails with exactly no freedom on how you want to roleplay. RPGs in 2023, everyone. Don't worry, Todd. I'm sure mods will fix this for you like they always do. Ah, yes, Todd. Give me those sweet little lies. Seriously, though, this man could lie to me like every single day and I'd have no issues. You normally can't survive in space without a spacesuit. Wait. Were you expecting me to say something? You can't survive in space without a spacesuit. You can't survive in space without a spacesuit. What, are you a xenomorph or whatever the hell Freezer is? No, it's not possible. I, I digress. In today's video, we're going to find out, can you beat Starfield? completely naked. The rules are simple, don't wear anything during the entire playthrough. Stop out! Hey, it's me, Jet, and welcome to Starfield. We start this adventure by getting checked out by Asian Mummy Lin. Instead of waiting around while they had their random conversations about getting your cut or not getting your cut. You make your cut, you get your cut. No exceptions. If you do the work, you get paid. <laughs> That's what she literally just said. That makes me so angry. If you work your cut, you get your cut. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I decided to run straight past to the cutter and get the mining done preemptively so I could rock it past. I waited around for a little bit. And you work your cut, you get your cut. No exceptions. You work your cut, you get your cut. No exceptions. You work your cut, you get your cut. No exceptions. And then I sprinted and I touched the artifact almost as soon as the cave was open. You work your cut, you get your cut. No exception. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't. After touching the artifact and seeing the face of God itself, I then had to make a character in which I could truly feel and connect with his want to just be naked all the time. Oh my god! <laughs> You can glitch his face into his own face and make it black. That's perfect. That's not how that's supposed to look. You know what? It's staying. <laughs> For the background, I decided to go with Cyber Runner just because it put a major importance on stealth, security, and theft. All of which I was going to take advantage of given I was naked the entire game and my little skin can't take bullets very well. For the three traits, I specifically picked Alien DNA, Extrovert, and Space. I would like to mention that Space is practically useless in this playthrough and I should have picked Terraforma. However, when I first started this, I hadn't played the game yet. Welcome. Was the name, and the game was Starfield. And it was time to rip the clothes off of Walter's body for the only time in this playthrough. <laughs> I rate this physique uh, 3.5 out of 10. Alright, I'm ready. Oh. You don't look good. Alright, hey! What do you mean I don't look good? What the hell? I think I look pretty great. Uh, hey, that was my sandwich! <laughs> After I was done fucking around, we come to the first challenge of the playthrough. See, in the starting area, you immediately have to put your helmet on so you can get acclimatized to the game in which you're mostly gonna be out in environments in which you can't breathe without a spacesuit. My hurdle here was trying to survive out in an environment which was actively trying to kill me. I'm in danger! I die. See, the funny thing happens I've noticed in Starfield, and I don't know if this is a glitch or not, but I'm pretty sure it's a glitch because later on in the run, it led to my computer crashing. <laughs> However, what happens is when you die of rather oxygen deprivation or environmental hazards, you respawn and now you just don't take any damage. Wait, what happened? 10 out of 10, Bethesda, good job. I've already found a bug. Imagine needing a spacesuit, just breathe in the air. Breathe air! After I had gotten over the first hurdle, I was a little worried how the pirate fight would go given I was naked. This is what I would say if I wasn't just invincible for no reason, which did disappear as soon as I left the cell. So overall, it was a cakewalk and I left the planet. After a really slow tutorial and committing space vehicular manslaughter I landed on a planet because some pirates decided they really wanted this smoke. If you want me to pretend these pirates were a challenge given they are literally tutorial enemies, you are watching the wrong channel. I committed low density genocide I spoke to their leaders, pushed random buttons, and convinced them to leave me alone. Then I abused that trust for sneak exp me standing victorious, corpses surrounding me, I headed towards New Atlantis. 
<laughs> I sold everything that my loot goblin ass picked up off of all the corpses, and this is where I'm going to say, in future, I'm not going to be mentioning the trading and selling going forward, as I would prefer to keep this video as short as I can. Yes, I know what genre I'm in right now, but if I can make this video one hour instead of an hour and a half, two hours, so on and so forth, I would prefer. For the most part, just understand that I do a lot of trading and buying behind the scenes for bullets, and I sell literally every weapon I pick up of every single corpse. I get scanned into the lodge, have an incredibly boring conversation with the gang, and sat around doing nothing but punching them repetitively. After that, I was off to Mars. Now, you might think for a second this is another hurdle in my most wonderful journey to survive without a spacesuit, but you'd be wrong. I just ran over to the door and changed cells before I died. I'm pretty sure if you didn't have a suit on Mars, you'd die immediately. Apparently, I can just run for it. Gaming. I had to speak to this bartender to locate a man who currently held an artifact, and in doing so, I had to deal with his slow ass talking speed. I just spammed buttons in the persuasion menu, got the information, and left to kill a bunch of people on a space station. I would say these combat encounters were tough, but in reality, they didn't really make these first few quest enemies all that hard to kill because they're right at the start of the game, so I mostly just tried to level my sneaking as much as I could by doing sneak attacks, but... Wait, Berserker, that's a thing? Does more damage the less armor someone has? This is perfect for me. It's literally a Berserker's corrosion. That's great, I'm gonna use that. And I'm a stealth build, so it works. Grabbing the note in which the man who had my artifact was, we left the space station and shot out his tires so we could board. That was the easiest thing I've ever done in my life. Being forced to be hey, the Dash. good guy once again, I killed nameless bad guy NPC number four. <laughs> I saved the man and took his artifact as a reward. We returned to the lodge, I slapped the artifact in, suffered through some more boring ass dialogue, and was told I needed to go to a sandy planet with this cowboy guy and his kid to get the next one. Ah, uh, yeah, bringing children to the line of fire. Yeah, that's my favorite. When we got there, it turns out a local gang was robbing the bank. For... reasons. I did want to convince them to just come out to save time, however, I wanted to shoot them a lot more. So I abused the stealth system the most I could, and did exactly that. I didn't realize I probably didn't need to do this quest. Pity though, after I just realized that, I ran over to Sam's relative and accidentally got caught stealing a pair because I was bored out of my mind standing around listening to a bunch of NPCs. When I returned to the house, I abused the persuasion system again wow. and joined the map. Also around this point that I had found a suppressed lawgiver. Let's just say, it was my name. After slowly and systematically wiping out all members of the Shore Gang, I was rewarded with another artifact. And a wet dream about space, apparently. Because this game is incredibly predictable, I made a guess of what would happen next, and immediately I was correct. Let me guess, there's some random fucking conversation when we get out of here. Wow, there it is. There's the conversation. This conversation didn't matter at all. I convinced them all to stand down. They begged me to help, and I denied that because fuck them for wasting my time. You can't just- oh. We shot back to the lodge, dumped the artifact, and I learned a very funny but valuable way to grind stealth hits. See, in Bethesda's infinite wisdom in designing a game with way too many essential NPCs, there's one NPC that you can stealth hit over and over from behind and receive no bounty from. Just make sure you down him in one hit. Good job, Bethesda. To progress the story, I needed to grab Barrett from the starting area, which also gave me a chance Hi, to visit Mommy Lynn. Lynn! Oh no, don't- Stop. I found a distress signal, invited Lynn onto my crew because, like, guys, come on, it's Lynn. Wherever I go, she could just be like, you work your cut, you get your cut, and it's perfect. God, I'm so excited to just be running around with her and she just, like, reminds me that if I work my cut, I get my cut. That makes my life so much easier. I won't forget that if I do the work, I'll get paid. Now, we run into another hurdle. A planet with no atmosphere, no oxygen, and I had to sprint across to advance the quest. So I jacked my bloodstream full of experimental drugs, amp and heart plus, and sprinted over to the landmark. All right, gotta move on. Nah, there's no inside. Shit, how do we do this? And fun fact, because I had it located on the map, now I can fast travel back to my ship, even though I was taking damage, and then fast travel back, proceed with the quest, and then leave. Hurdle jumped over. We had another one. 
Barrett was on a moon with no oxygen. I have no idea how I'm going to do this. So I ran into the camp, not being able to breathe, getting shot at, and I... I just kind of ran past everyone and went inside where I could breathe. I don't have anything for this, I'm sorry. Okay, we go into the Crimson Fleet place, nice. See, Barrett was kidnapped because he was actually an underground drug dealer that the entire group of Constellation didn't know about. And his cover had been blown. So, I killed everyone. And I saved him. You know, this quest was better than the run-of-the-mill fetch quest that Bethesda normally throws at me, and I did get this cool gun that makes humans drop medkits, so I actually didn't hate it. It definitely had nothing to do with me having the ability to recruit Lin to my crew. Nothing like that. To make my life easier in space, I brought the Rambler, because if you don't know, this boy can fit so much speed in it. Whoa. But is it fast? My god. I just sped right up with that. Oh, okay, stop, stop, stop. Oh my lord, that was quick. I just got there within like two seconds. I wasn't lying about the speed. I found a fellow gym rat, Vlad, and fell in love with one of the only well-dialogued and voiced characters in this game. Alright, I thought I was the only one in Constellation who worked out. Nice arms, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jim Bryan. He pointed us in the direction of another amazing and incredibly well-voiced character in this game. Stop. And Treasure. Why do you draw out the vowels of my name in such a prolonged manner? Because he's into you, dumbass. Now this cave was parts incredibly fun and very uncomfortable because of how down bad Barrett was for Andrea. Andreja. Andrea. I don't know how to say her name, and I'm not even gonna commit to it. Imagine this thing coming at you. Like... <laughs> hey, drop two med packs. Let's go. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Andresia, hey. So I want to try something out. Got a second. Oh my god, he's so down bad. Shut up, Barrett. Okay. I'm going to teach you how to dance. Take my hand. Oh my god, he's so down bad, dude. He's so down bad. Like, listen to Barrett. He's like so into her. Andresia! Andresia! I've got the perfect plan this time, I promise. I cannot fathom where this conversation is going. Okay. I'm going to teach you how to dance. Take my hand. What is the purpose of this activity? Everybody loves this stuff. I opt out. I swear to God, he's literally trying to hit up Andrager again. This is starting to weed me out. Guys, this is starting to make me feel real weird. I'm not gonna lie. Seriously, he said this one line over and over again that I genuinely was starting to wonder if he'd gained sentience and he just wanted a date. Men are lonely, guys. Men are lonely. I murdered my way through spaces and grabbed the artifact. On the way back home, I grabbed another artifact from a sandy planet. Let's see if we die outside the ship, chat. And if we're gonna have to, like, sprint everywhere. Uh, a little bit. It's not that bad, though. If anything, the sandstorm's gonna make me stronger. It'll make me stronger. Exactly. <laughs> doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. It will make me stronger, you can't say it won't. That is all I have to note about that. Man, it's it's like Bethesda almost tried on these fetch quests. I felt something cooling me afterwards. It was almost like a chanting in the distance. In the back of my mind, cooling me to a temple. It's almost like I was. He's Dragon Ball. Yeah, that's the joke I went with for the Starborn powers. Stop judging me. <laughs> Check that out. It's cool, right, guys? 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 After dropping off the artifacts and listening to more boring ass dialogue, it was on to Neon, the city Bethesda should have started you in, where I Open. had to help Open. buy an artifact. Now, this might prolong the video, but I want to take a second to say I actually really like Neon City. It's beautiful, it feels alive and lived in, and is definitely my favorite city in Starfield. Why don't you leave a comment right now and tell me what your favorite city in Starfield is and why? <laughs> the same! 
That's amazing. I had to stand there and watch this weird, completely real, loving relationship. I sorted out the meeting and found the buyer. For some reason, the buyer thought I was tougher than I was. I don't know, but your security here seems to have some fancy gear. Fit. I'm naked! I then preemptively stole the artifact and then I called security to handle the situation. Because as my high school bully said once, what are you gonna do, mate? If you can't tell for some reason, I'm Australian. That's the joke. It turns out the man I stole from stole it from someone else. Ironic. But I abused the persuasion system and this random guard fucked off. I was very tired at this point in the quest and I decided I wanted to finish it, as you can tell. Alright, I'll go take care of him. I'll literally just kill him all. I don't care. Just get out of my way. I will literally just shoot him in the face as soon as I get a chance. I don't care. So I rushed past this and kept my promise. Yeah, this is literally just more genocide. <laughs> Gaming. What befuddles me about this whole interaction is why he thought I would stop and talk. So far, I have proven through my entire playthrough that if you get in my way, you are going to die. You'd think my reputation at this point would literally be, I don't care about you or your problems or what you have to say, I just want to get this artifact back to Constellation. I don't want your money, I don't want anything. Okay. We'll literally kill you just for fun. I'm like the Terminator if he was an old man. It can't be bargained with. It can't be reasoned with. It doesn't feel pity or remorse or fear. Hey, you made it to the middle point of the video. Why don't you like the video, sub and hit the bell, and maybe leave a comment. You can always undo all of that later. I really wouldn't mind. I also have a spare copy of the premium edition of Starfield. So I'm giving it away. If you want that, leave a comment, like the video right after it finishes, and subscribe with the bell notifications. After a week, I'll use commentpicker.com and I'll message the winner. On the way back to the lodge, we were interrupted by some people calling themselves the Starborn. I don't know, it sounded like a bunch of weird cosplayers to me, not gonna lie. So I rolled down my window, flipped them off, and headed home. Bye aliens, you suck. Back at the lodge, I dumped the artifact, I had a serious conversation about the ship we bumped into, and again, I made a prediction which... You can guess where this is going. Well, not really. Starborn sure know how to make an entrance. They're literally just humans. I'm sorry, like they're literally just humans. Starborn. Carbon based life forms. We are also Starborn, we came from stars. That is- that- that's- that's the reference they're making! I- I don't- I- genuinely it's just humans. They're also just humans. <laughs> just probably like affected by the artifact. Somehow I just guessed a majority Don't of the story. I wasn't really that far off either. God, do you know what my favorite thing is? Apparently it's murder because I sure do kill a lot of spaces. Those. Whoop. <laughs> That was a head. That's a lot of bullets damn damage. I'm not going to lie though, these artifact quests are incredibly boring and I will what save you that? from them. I murdered NPCs, I grabbed artifacts from a randomly generated nice. buildings in which you can find on almost every other artifact. planet, and then the after going on to multiple different planets to get free XP, I hit this guy about a hundred times with a melee weapon for three levels. Patch this with Ezra, I dare you. Go ahead. See, the joke is they won't do that, because then they'd have to make one of their essential NPCs not essential anymore, and you'd lose the ability to customize your ship after killing them. At this point, I was level 20 and had most of the stealth trees. Pain tolerance and health trees maxed out. At some point, I do come back to finish off the trees, but I wanted to smash it out overall, so it wasn't needed later on. Up to the eye, I got stuck with a boring old Sam Cole, and I had to visit a collector who had his hands on one of our artifacts. I don't want Sam Cole, I want Andresia. He's just superior in every single way. Petrov seemed like an interesting guy, but also... Actually, I need to go eat some... I need to go get my food, so you can have a conversation with yourself, bro. I need to go make myself some oats. I abused the persuasion system again because it's poorly made and you don't even need to read most of them. And he took us to see the artifact. And as soon as I saw it, I grabbed it and ran. Thanks. <laughs> Then I realized I could kill the collector, so I shot him a bunch. And after he begged for his life like a oh, little yeah, bitch. Jess, you stop whining like a little bitch and do what I say. 
done! And he cooled off the security. I then come sobbed him into the next dimension. What? After killing their boss, I spent about 30 minutes fighting his security. That's not a joke. That, yes, I could have run past, and if I wasn't buying about 50 med packs between trips, I would have left. But given I could heal faster than then they hurt me, because remember, my numbers are bigger than yours. My wounds heal faster than you can make them. I was able to stand in front of them and shoot them until they died. Apparently, I left some people alive, though. I definitely didn't do that. And they wanted to shoot down my ship. But remember, because the Rambler has a lot of speed, I just grabbed drive out of there in about half a second. While we were gone, my old high school friend Hunter decided to almost fatally wound all of my friends from Constellation. I don't really know if you'd call them friends. It's kind of like being in university where you have this club and there's that one person or people that you really don't really talk to, but you have to or to, learn. to collaborate on certain projects. At the end of the project, you literally never speak to them again. That's kind of how I see Constellation. No, Becky, I don't want to go to your nephew's bar mitzvah. I don't know you. I'm honestly not even annoyed he tried to kill them. I can't blame him either. I would have probably done the same. In fact, I literally tried to when I first got this game. I had to make the choice to defend the, the lodge or the eye. And I genuinely didn't care about anyone other than Andrea and Vlad, so I picked the eye. Up there, everyone was alive and well. And when I returned... Wait, is Sam dead? Oh, no. Sam died. Anyway... <laughs> I then had to have a boss fight with the hunter, I kicked his ass, we ran through Atlantis, and escaped. We then decided we have to keep the artifacts on my ship from now on because hey, I can just literally teleport wherever I want because my grab drive takes about half a second to load up so it's the safest place to keep it. I went to a planet, solved the puzzle by definitely not googling it because it was late at night and I wanted to sleep, followed a quest marker over to some temple, killed its bug guardians, And solved another puzzle. I definitely didn't Google this one. You, you can't prove that. You can't. Leaving the planet, I was hailed by a starborn ship. They wanted to have a conversation, and oh my god, Sam is alive! But actually, no, because this isn't Sam. Or I genuinely can't remember who this is. They are them from another universe? Jokes aside, I actually thought this was pretty cool. Turns out I died in a. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Turns out I died. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I really can't say this seriously. Apparently, I died in this Sans universe, and he was the one who collected all the artifacts, and when you collect all of them, use them for unity. And you can literally become a dun 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 Starborn. I called this that Starborn were people. I fucking called it! After this decently cool revelation, I decided to use all the money I had saved up to upgrade my ship to my ship, the SS Shaft. This has to be a running gag every time we make and do anything in this game. This is the this is the SS Shaft. Now, I want to stress this next part as much as I can. This next quest is fucking awesome. To explain it, and honestly, if you haven't played Starfield yet, make sure you go and do this quest because it's the best one in the game. So if you want to skip past this point in the video, that's okay. All right, but please don't do that. Just let the video play and walk away for like a minute and come back. Or just take your headphones off out, whatever. There was an artifact in this research facility. And it more or less combined two universes on top of each other. One where the base is destroyed and everyone but one person is dead. The other where that one person died saving all the people in an explosion in the basement. You more or less have to switch universes to traverse down to the artifact, fight Roblox and bugs, and after shutting down the machine in the basement that is doing all of this, you get to decide which universe survives. This quest is fucking sick, and I wish Bethesda did more of this earlier on. I'm shocked out of my mind that they put this behind so many shitty fetch quests. I would go into more detail about this quest, I really would. However, I want you, the person watching this video right now, to go and play this quest. Overall, I decided to pick the universe with only one person in it. Only reason being, I wanted to kill as many people as possible, and in my mind, these other people would cease to exist once I made this decision. It's like I had the trolley problem in front of me, and except I had to pull the lever to kill 80 people or one person. And I didn't even think, and I cranked that shit like Soldier Boy. 
Soldier, Boy. Soldier Boy is still relevant, right? That was a 10 out of 10 quest design, and I hope the DLC is more of this. I had another fetch quest, and it turns out this planet didn't even have an atmosphere. So this was another hurdle. Running across got me nowhere, though turns out because it took me like five tries of just dying to the environmental damage of having no oxygen in my lungs, I was able to recreate the glitch in which I just stopped taking damage altogether. I'm not taking damage from the environment. Wait, what? I'm, I'm, I'm abusing that. 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 Problem being, now it made the game deafeningly loud. Oh god, what has happened to the audio? It just sounds... Oh, it does not sound good. But I have to do it. I have to just take a... I have to abuse this, otherwise, like, I won't deal with the... Oh god, it is not nice. I won't put you through that, and you're welcome, but it almost- it, it was bad. I took advantage of this to grab the artifact. However, when I returned to my ship, my entire computer crashed. And I don't just mean like a regular crash, I mean I heard the same loud ass noise that was deafening me while in the game. Constantly, like it was broken, and then my entire screen just went black. Probably not doing that again. But now it was time to head to the moon after the Starborn told me to go there. Don't ask, I don't know the answer. I wasn't paying attention. At this point, I'm just following the missions and following the quest markers. After listening to some NASA fanfiction, and you could literally call this entire game that now I think about it, this is where things get difficult. The recording on the moon led me to going to Earth's NASA base and finding out how grab drives were discovered. Problem being, Earth doesn't have an atmosphere. I was able to get the glitch working again to get inside, but then once I got inside, I had to get it working again. And then when I did, my computer immediately crashed again, and this time in a worse way. This was as if Todd Howard himself was saying, hey, Stop doing that. So after about 30 attempts, I caved. Now what you do is, you press the tilt key and you go TGM and you press enter. And we're sorted. <laughs> now we can do it. I really didn't want to risk my PC anymore, more than I already had been. Assuming this wasn't some memory leak or who knows what that would just happen anyway, I just decided that fuck it. If I could do this with a glitch, then there's no difference from using god mode and just running through it anyway. You can say this doesn't count, however, fuck you. When I did- <laughs> However, fuck you. When did I say I couldn't cheat? I've been abusing this poorly designed balanced game this entire time. So after a lot of expedition dumps, it turns out the artifacts were found years ago. 2100 years ago. That's not correct. After using them, it completely destroyed the atmosphere on Earth. I think I kind of actually wasn't paying attention. I'm not on the channel. If you want, go watch one of those. After my video, though, first. It's only fair. Come on, you've watched this far. After retrieving one of the last artifacts, Sam and the Hunter both had some philosophy about if it was good or not, and they blah, blah, blah. I really don't care. Just make me a fucking Starborn game. I picked the Hunter. We headed towards the temple and killed a load of Starborn. Starborn, more like Star Suck. Am I right? I would say these fights were hard, but I was at least level to 25 to 30 at this point, and again, my numbers are bigger than yours. Then the coolest thing happened. I am. They started universe swapping. I went back to well, the start I of the game. I went to a universe with Petrov. I killed him again immediately because I don't like this guy. <laughs> After getting out of that universe, I went lower in the temple. I found my dead self, which I still don't fully believe happened. Shockingly though, the fake Sam Cole brought a bunch of different me's and Andreas from it's different me. universes to kill me. What he doesn't understand is... They ain't me! Run them hands up! I killed them all brutally with no mercy. Time to go in. <sighs> Lastly, the fake Sam stood between me and immortality. So I abused the persuasion system again. What did you oh, think it was going to happen? Seriously, I, I don't know what to I, I grabbed the final artifact and headed towards Unity. I had ramped up my grab drive and in seriously half a second, boom. Landing in Unity, I saw myself with a weird ass voice and I had a boring conversation with myself. It genuinely doesn't matter. I walked into the weird sphere thing behind him, and it made me Starborn. And there you have it. You can, in fact, beat Starfield naked. If 
you abuse a bunch of bugs, crash your PC three times, cheat, and be a terrible human being. Yeah, honestly a small price to pay if you ask me for a, a Starfield playthrough. One last thing that I will probably never say again, becoming a Starborn makes you go into New Game Plus, and that is actually the coolest thing ever. You even get a cool Starborn ship and a suit for a whole new playthrough, and you get like a bunch of new dialogue options. Overall, I actually really did enjoy this game. I just wish they allowed us more freedom. And apparently it broke my character's face and reset him to generic old man preset 3. So Todd, please fix that. Overall, I loved this and it was great. I'm not a review channel, but I think before I was giving Starfield like a 6, I'm going to give it a 7 because the story was actually pretty good. Please just stop giving us fucking stupid fetch quests. They are such a waste of time. There were so many good quests in here that if you just had more of that and less of go here, grab this, the game would have been a billion times better and I would have even considered it an 8. Overall though, I know I've probably already said overall, I love this. It was great. Starfield was fun. I'm working on how many levels I can get in Skyrim without leaving Riverwood next, so stay tuned for that. And if you haven't seen that, check it out. Lastly, subscribe and if you have any cool ideas for challenges, I don't care what it is, throw them at me and by God, I'll give them my best bet. Have a good rest of your day, everyone.